what I do as writing, speaking, doing workshops around the area of global business protocol. Right now, I'm doing a series of workshops for the Port of LA for their export series. And global business protocol in this sense can mean understanding what it means to be on time, whether you're having a meeting in Germany or Mexico City or South Africa, and how to be seen as polite and knowledgeable at a dinner in Beijing, a meal in New York, or dinner in Paris. It's all the soft skills that go into working globally. Critical to be curious, to be open and interested about people and places, to have the energy and excitement to travel and see the world. You'll find that people who work in the area of global protocol and culture, as well as in study abroad, not only are curious, they're well educated. Most of them have bachelor's and master's degree. I have a master's in international business and an MBA. Many people have backgrounds in international relations, public policy. Almost everybody's done some study abroad and has lived and worked outside the US. In addition to education and being curious and open, you have to be flexible, organized, and committed. It takes a lot of energy and commitment to do this work. So one other thing to think about aside from basic education is also a language skill. You'll find that many people in this field have uh, an ability to speak a second language, sometimes a third. And knowing something of any language is essential, at least to be able to say hello, please, and thank you in many languages wherever you travel. So how do you get into this business? Either actually the education study abroad side or the global culture and protocol side. I'd suggest that it all begins with networking and information interviews, but how do you find people in these fields? There are two very good organizations that have websites and annual conferences. If you're interested in the cross-cultural part of it, I would suggest an organization called CETAR, S-I-E-T-A-R, the Society for Intercultural Education, Training, and Research. And for the study abroad side, there's an organization known as International Educators Society. It was original, originally the National Association of Foreign Student Advisors, and that part of the name still is their website address, nafsa.org. Both organizations are filled with people with lots of information willing to help. Also, for the cross-cultural and protocol side, there are some organizations that exist in most communities, uh, sister cities, International Visitors Council, both great organizations to get involved with and meet people who would share a common interest.